On today's video, we're going to talk about right rear spring and right rear spring load, and we're going to do a short version. Okay, we're back. And on today's video, we're going to talk about right rear spring and right rear spring load. Uh, where's the load come from? What load do we need? These are often the questions that are most often asked is how much load and why is the load important? Well, let's start with how much load. Okay, uh, it, the load's going to vary between cars. So a modified is going to have a lower load number than, say, a street stock because the total weight that we're dealing with on the right rear corner is lower. Okay, so we're looking at two thirds of the weight on the spring, basically. So it's uh, the mass a little different than that, but that's a general rule of thumb. So on a modified B mod, we're going to say our load number is 400 pounds. So uh, here at BSB, we typically are shooting between 375 and 400 pounds uh, of load on the right rear. Okay. So that's the load amount we're looking for. The key is, is we want that load to be there at ride height. Okay. Um, if the load, if we put the load in the car, uh, or we test the load, or we check the load, and the car is not at right height, then our load on the right rear is never going to be correct. So we can't have an unbalanced car. We, we need to be doing this when we scale our car. We need to be doing it without a left rear preload spring in the car. We need to be doing it with a scaling spring in the left rear. The right fronts need to be right at right height. And the right rear needs to be at right height. And what this is telling us by putting this load number in, is telling us kind of where the balance of the weight in the car is. And over time, the weight's gotten too far away from the right rear. Now, in the last couple of years, uh, you know, three years, we've gotten very good. Everybody's gotten very good about uh, determining wheel loads and load stick numbers and all you know smash numbers everybody's been doing everything okay and we have gotten better about you know being closer we were getting pretty far off i mean i had cars with you know 200 150 pounds of load on the right rear okay why do we want load on the right rear load on the right rear is going to allow that tire to stay hooked to the racetrack okay we're not looking for a side bite load number. We're looking for a rear steer on the gas load number for our car to stay attached to the racetrack. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Now, how are we going to get there? How are we going to? We're going to spring smash it. We're going to do the math. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the math, and we're going to do a comparison video between the spring smasher and the math, and you will see that there is a little bit of difference if you're on a spring slider, a coilover shock, or you're doing the math on a spring slider. There is a slight difference, and there's, you know, everybody's like, well, you got to do it on a smasher. When you got a smasher, do it. If you don't, don't feel bad or out of place. The math is more than doable, okay? So, We'll show you here on this chart how to do the, how to determine how much spring compression you should have. Okay, this chart here shows you the load that you're looking for, 375 pounds, the rate of your spring. So you take the 375, your desired load, 375, 400, whatever you determine your desired load is, divide it by the spring rate. Okay, the spring rate is very important part of this whole structure. But in this example, 225. Divide that, it gives you 1.666. Okay, we're going to call it 1.662. That is the amount of compression the spring should have in it at right height. Okay, so 13 inch spring minus 1.660. That's what it should be. Okay. Um, we can, we can go a little both ways. Um, 
So that's the, that's the chart, and that's how to figure the spring rate. It works for every spring rate. Um, we've covered why we need that load. Why we need that load is so we don't run out of right rear grip before we run out of corner, okay? We need to load the right rear tire laterally with weight transfer to the spring. This is why the spring rate is very important because you can get a lot of body roll and not get load, okay? We need that load and then we're gonna come to that load and then we're gonna laterally hold load on the right rear. And that gives us grip to continue to accelerate around the corner along with, you know, we match it with rebound. That helps the car uh, maintain that load as it's climbing the bar on the right rear. So in the next chart, we're gonna show you how to determine or how to move load in your car uh, by doing turns on your weight jack bolts. So guys, a lot of times go, you know, um, I just put two turns in the right rear. Well, you didn't, add load to the right rear you raise the ride height okay when you add load that means weight that's in the car is physically being moved uh, around in the car either by putting turns in all four corners or by um, putting lead on the car so in this chart we show that we're going to put weight into the right rear so we're going to be two in the right rear, two out of the left rear, one out of the right front, and one in the left front. So those are turns, and this will move weight to the right rear. It'll move about, it depends on the car, but it'll move about um, 25 to 40 pounds of weight to the right rear. Okay. In a modified that weighs 2450 with driver, you're you're probably only going to be able to do this once, okay? That car is already too light. Um, without the driver, you know, it's roughly a 2250, 2200-pound car. Uh, it doesn't have enough weight to, to, you know, for, say, to rob Peter to pay Paul. It doesn't have enough weight in the car. So you're going to be adding lead. Add, lead, is not, lead is not a bad thing. Lead is a great thing. Lead is your friend. You've heard me say that before. I'll say it a lot. Lead makes traction. Lead makes grip. So that's how you put turns in. If you can do it in a heavier car like a street stock, you might be able to do it uh, multiple times. Uh, in a modified, a lightweight modified B mod, uh, you're probably only going to be able to do it once. Okay. This information, you know, applies to A mod, B mod, street stock, late model type car. The mod light guys, they have a whole problem with the right rear. I mean, there's a whole thing with right rear spring compression, the spring rate, the weight transfer. So there's a whole issue, and we're going to do a video on that at some point, but there's a whole issue with the mod, uh, mod light guys. So once you get the right rear set, okay, and you decide – you're done scaling your car, right rear set. We know the balance in the car is good. And we go and we add our left rear preload spring. No matter what spring you have or what load you have it on, it's going to change the right rear. Okay? Doesn't matter. The right rear is set. It is what it is. This is the way it's going to stay. If you change it after you add the left rear preload spring, then all the weight transfer or distribution in the car is also going to change. So we do not want to do that. Once the load's set, we leave it. If we get to the racetrack and we determine that we need more load, then we're going to have to do something to add more load. At the racetrack, nine times out of ten, it's going to be add lead. Okay. When we add lead, we're not going to try to redo the math in our head and say that we're this or we're that, you know, that we reduce the rear percentage or left side bite, we're just, we're just stay away from that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know, we're at 375 pound load at right height, we added 40 pound chunk of lead on the right rear, okay? So adding, adding weight at the racetrack. 
uh, adding preload to the left rear. We are not going, it is going to affect our scale numbers, but we're not going to express it that way. We're going to, because we're going to be wrong. We're just going to express it as this is our car. We had it set at um, right height at load and we added, you know, lead to the right rear. Um, so to kind of go back and review, we're going to set our right height on the right rear and our load at the same time. So we're going to be 375 pounds of load. We're going to say our right height is 12 inches. At top of axle tube, bottom of frame, 12 inches. We're at 12 inches, we're at 375 pounds. If you can't get there, you got to do two in, two out. Uh, I'll put a, a link in the description to our website or our team page of where that's at. Um, you got to do the two in, two out. When you're all done, you have to be at right height. If you go to a spring smasher and you smash it and your center to center is 18 inches, <coughs> excuse me, your center to center is 20 inches, then you have to go set it at 20 inches, 375, go back, put it on the car, and make sure it's at 20 inches. So if your right height 12 inch dimension is 20 inches center to center, when you're done smashing, you must be at 20 inches. If you're at 21, you're wrong. If you're at 19 and a half, you're wrong. So your center to center me measurement that you take when you go to the smasher has to be the same. So you can't just put it in there, put it on, throw it on the car, call it done. Lots of people do that. Not right. Right height, load are correct. 225 pound spring. We'll, I'll explain a little more of that in a different video. But spring, the mass right. And the reason we need the right rear load is because without the load, we won't have the grip to accelerate through the corner. So we want to pick up the throttle early. This is not about making side bite. This is about making right rear load in a free, not loose, free rear steer right rear free condition. We want the right rear to be free and we want to be on throttle and we want to be fast on throttle, okay? Short version, and not an hour long, but short version, right rear spring. We're gonna do left rear preload. Um, I appreciate you people. Uh, help share, comment, and like these videos. It helps us to do more. It helps um, YouTube to uh, promote our stuff. I, for a while, took off the monetary deal because this isn't about me making money. This is about me trying to help you educate yourselves. Now we're back on the monetary deal. Uh, so you're going to see ads in the videos. I apologize for that. But help us to help you. All right. God bless you. Good luck. Go fast. See you next time.